This week, the newly constituted Florida legislature held its first meeting. New members officially sworn in. House and Senate leaders telegraphed priorities for session that begins in March. The governor did attend the ceremonies but left without talking to reporters who were waiting with questions there. And the elephant not in the room was COVID-19. And that is where we begin with two South Florida lawmakers who are there. Chevron Jones is a newly elected Democratic state senator moving over from the House. He is from West Park in Broward. Daniel Perez is a House Republican representing Westchester in Miami-Dade and designated to be House Speaker in 2024. South Florida represent. Good morning, gentlemen. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Glad, glad you are with good us. Good morning. Representative Perez, explain to us when you were House Speaker, Mr. Sprouls, uh, gave his address to the members, uh, he did not really, I mean, he just glancingly mentioned COVID-19. That was uh, also true in the Senate. We'll let uh, Senator uh, Jones discuss that. But why, why was there really no emphasis on the coronavirus uh, in the House when you convened on, on Tuesday? Yeah, Michael, look, I think the important part is that Speaker Sprouse acknowledges that over the next two years, there's going to be a variety of issues that are important to the state of Florida. One of those obviously being how we deal with COVID-19. But he wanted to give a, a big picture of what the next two years would look like. And he acknowledged that COVID-19 is something very real and something that we will have to take care of in the Florida House. And I can tell you, based on our uh, conversations on a regular basis, that we're fully aware that our goal is to make sure that we put our kids back in school um, that we allow the businesses to keep flourishing and at the same time uh, make sure that some sort of legislation on how to deal with COVID uh, legally uh, takes place over the next two years. And I fully expect that. And the speaker also designated a committee, a brand new committee, to look at Florida's response. Senator Jones, that's the first time I said Senator Jones. Uh, <laughs> weigh in on that, if you would, on the Senate side. Yeah, well, you know, on the Senate side, I, I'm, I'm very appreciative for uh, what, what, what President Simpson said. Um, when, one, you saw all the procedures when we got over into the Senate side to where uh, it, it spoke about us wearing masks. It told us to honor social distancing. Um, and you know, the, the, the Senate president made it extremely clear that currently right now, we over the next two years, we will see a $5.4 billion uh, shortfall within, within our revenue. Uh, so it was acknowledged. Uh, my hope, and I'm sure other senators, our hope was that, um, that over in the House side that they would have acknowledged COVID uh, the same way that we, uh, over in the Senate have acknowledged, even individuals being on the Republican side, they acknowledge that COVID is real and know that this is something that we're going to have to deal with moving forward into the legislative session. Yeah, well, let me follow up on that, uh, Chevron, and also uh, Representative Diaz. Uh, the governor this week on Thursday released a rather unusual five-minute, 36-second video tweet in which he said, I've been to Washington, I have assurances, we're going to get our fair share of the vaccines. In fact, the Eli Lilly uh, monoclonal drug is already at hospitals in South Florida. So that's all to the good. What role is the legislature going to have in overseeing how those drugs are distributed? Who gets them in what order? Representative Paris, what, what, what about that? Yeah, Michael, that's a protocol that actually we're working on as we speak. And I would compare it similar to how the testing took place uh, for COVID-19 from where we started to where we are today. I think we learned a lot as a state on how to implement the testing and what areas uh, needed it a little bit more than others. Um, and I think I would, I would expect the same when it came to the vaccine. Um, and look, I wanna make sure that everyone understands that even in the Florida House, I don't wanna separate it from the Senate. We obviously uh, are, are, are true believers in stating that COVID-19 is very real. Um, and you saw that, we all got tested before walking into the chamber, we wore masks. So uh, I, I think to insinuate anything otherwise would be unfair. But when it comes to the vaccine, now I would expect it to be uh, equally distributed amongst the entire state, uh, but similar to how we have done it with local governments working hand to hand. Um, there hasn't been a separation of communication. Quite frankly, it's been the opposite. And I continue, I expect us to continue to work with the local governments in implementing the vaccines. You know, that that's, um, that's a really interesting point because we have some sound, some clips of sound from earlier this week where uh, five or six local mayors here in South Florida got together to really sound an alarm about locally they can't do what they feel they need to do in their own cities to keep people safe. Well, take a listen to, I believe it's going to be Mayor Dan Gelber of Miami Beach. Governor needs to implement a statewide mask mandate. It just is needed. 
uh, across the country, governors of every political stripe are doing it. It just makes no sense whatsoever um, that instead of working united, um, there has been no communications. The positions uh, that the governor has taken thus far uh, have made our jobs uh, very difficult. So I'm not sure if you could visually see what we see. You've heard from the mayors of Miami Beach and Hialeah and St. Petersburg looking for the ability that really the governor took away to put some teeth in local actions to do what locally they think is appropriate, especially here in South Florida. So I, I wonder if you would react to that. And, and is that something that the legislature might promote? Yeah, Glenn, I mean, look, that, those speeches to me sound like political puffery, to be to be honest. I mean. Look, a statewide mandate isn't going to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish locally. If you want to locally uh, implement a curfew, the mayors have been able to do that. If they've uh, wanted individuals to wear masks outside, they've been able to implement those. But uh, to have a statewide mandate, look, what we have in Clay County is a different situation than we have in Miami-Dade County. It, it's just it's not the same parts of the state. And you got to let each local government dictate what's best for their specific residents. Right, and but look, didn't, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but really the, what the governor also did was took away the ability to sanction, and that is really the key to local governments enforcing whatever local governments want to enforce. So do you see that as, as problematic? No, I don't see it as, as, as problematic. At the end of the day, what, what we need is, is personal responsibility. Um, we all need to take this very serious and make sure we wear our masks and make sure that we have social distancing. But look, the, the local governments, uh, Mayor, former Mayor Jimenez was able to do it, and he got a lot of kickback for it, but he was able to do so. The same with Francis Suarez. They've been able to implement it locally. Um, and and I, I haven't heard them uh, complaining about the, their relationship uh, with the governor. I, I would say that the complete opposite. So I think it's very interesting, too, Glenn, and I mean this respectfully. It's very interesting that, that some of those mayors are, are some of the more left-leaning uh, mayors, I would have liked for uh, you guys to implement uh, some clips from some of the Republican mayors on their opinion with the governor. Um, that that is a fair point, I believe. Carlos Hernandez of Hialeah, I believe, mm -hmm. is a Republican. Yeah, yeah, and their relationship, yeah. his relationship with the governor, I would say, is a little bit on the rocks. I would, quite frankly, <laughs> consider that a, a nice relationship. Yeah, uh, Chevron Jones, let me ask you about this. Uh, governor DeSantis is a smart, shrewd politician. Uh, we haven't really seen him publicly since November 4th when he went on Fox News and urged legislatures in Pennsylvania and Michigan to appoint electors who are Trump supporters, disregard the will of the people in those states who voted for Joe Biden. And on Tuesday, he was at your legislative session, ducked out without talking to reporters. Uh, what's up with the governor? Is he just trying to you know, keep a low profile because he doesn't want to say if President Trump should concede? Well, let's, let's be clear about one thing. Yeah, it, it's no secret that Donald Trump has lost has lost the election. Uh, and the fact that the governor of the state of Florida, uh, where 17,000 plus people are dead because of COVID, uh, wants to find himself um, buttoning into other states' business currently right now when it comes to the their electors and doing something that's quite frankly illegal um, is, 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 is totally beyond me. Yeah, Governor DeSantis, uh, we, what he should be focusing on right now, and he should be focusing on how we're going to get COVID under control here within the state of Florida, considering that we just saw the highest spike of 9,000 plus cases within the state of Florida. Uh, and you know, with all due respect to my friend Danny Perez, who I have a great deal of respect for and I love dearly, that the governor has taken that the taking those rights away from local government. So local governments cannot do what they need to do to keep people safe. Uh, and so they do not have that local control. So as it pertains to the president um, and, and Governor DeSantis, whatever he's trying to cover for, for uh, Donald Trump, it's over. The race is done. The, uh, Joe Biden will be elected the president on uh, January, uh, whatever date it is. I can't remember the date, but he will be the president at 12 o'clock p.m. Danny yeah. Perez, you want to you wanna react to that with the 30 seconds we have left? Yeah, sure. And I, 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 uh, I appreciate the kind words from, from Senator Jones, but we'll just agree to disagree at this point. I think uh, local governments have been able to, to do just that. Um, and yeah, the, the numbers have gone up, and I think the governor has acknowledged that. Uh, but if we're looking at, it depends on the sample size too, Glenn. I mean, if we're looking at uh, from several months to where we are today, if we're looking at hospitalization rates, uh, they're down. If we're looking at the mortality rate, it's down. 
Uh, COVID is not going anywhere. We need to continue to attack it aggressively. But we have done an impressive job here in Florida in comparison specifically to some of the more left-leaning states like New York and California. All right, Representative Daniel Perez of Westchester, thank you for your time this morning. Senator Chevron Jones, West Park, we always appreciate you being on the show. Thanks, Thanks so both, much. gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and just one note, I just want to fact check um, South Florida hospitals. There has been an uptick this yes. week in South Florida hospitals.